Okay folks, so back again with another shortish video. Uh, I am, in this video uh, I'm again using the um, the data file for the worksheet for Mano that we're going to use in lab class. So it's got these different scale variables on which we'll use as DBs. Uh, physical health, mental health, drug use and stress, higher scores, medium higher drug use, high stress, more mental health symptoms, more physical health symptoms. And we've got this grouping categorical variable, the age group, one is like 20 to 30 years, two is 30 to 40 years, three is 40 to 50 years, four is 50 to 60 years. Okay. So in a previous video, I kind of ran a manover and then did follow up uh, univariate F tests with a bomb for any correction to see which of the DVs was contributing significantly to the significant manover result. I'm gonna what I'm gonna do this time is run that manover again so we'll get the same sort of significant manover result but rather than doing univariate F tests I will then do uh, the I'll walk through the Roy Bargeman step down procedure so you can see how that's done as an alternative to uh, doing follow-up tests where you just kind of use univariate F uh, tests. Okay, so to run this, we're going to go analyze general linear model and multivariate. Age group is our independent variable or fixed vector, and we're going to combine four dependent variables: physical health, mental health, use of psychotropic drugs, and stressful life events. Okay, so we're going to combine those four to get our variates. Okay, um, options. We're going to ask for descriptives and homogeneity tests to keep it quite simple, really. Um, not going to ask for any post hoc tests at this stage. We shall can look at that afterwards. Uh, so from here, if we click OK. It's going to run the analysis for us. And as in previous uh, examples, you know, we get lots of printout from SVSS. The first shows us numbers we've got in each of our groups of the independent variable, all above 100 and uh, roughly equal. So that's a good thing. Then we get a table of descriptives for each age group broken down by the individual DBs. After that, we get our boxes M test, the table that shows that. And where this is a generalized kind of uh, quality homogeneity variance test really and it's um, it's testing to see if we can assume equal variances between our our different matrices our variance covariance matrices and we get a boxes m uh, of 54.145 the f statistic being 1.775 in this case and significance level of 0 0.006 and remember that this is a sensitive test so the advice is that you adjust significance criterion down to make it stricter so if if we get a p-value that's greater than 0 0.001 then we we treat it as a non-significant result and if it's non-significant we can assume equal variances so in this case as in the previous time around manover with this data set it's not significant so 0 0.006 is bigger 0.001 so we can assume equality of covariance matrices in this test case and then we can look at with that in mind we can look at our multivariate test table and because we can assume homogeneity of covariance covariance matrices we can use Wilkes lambda we get an f value of 4.879 p is less than 0.001 okay uh, so we've got again as we knew we were going to we've got a significant man over result so the age groups differ significantly on this combined dv of those there's a composite measure of those four um dependent variables that we used okay with that said in previous examples what we in the previous example what we did was we we did univariate f tests uh we checked levine's test for each of the uh, dependent variables individually. And what we found is the same as last time. We've found that physical health symptoms 
Levine's was not significant, so we can assume equal variances for physical health. Mental health, Levine's was not significant, so we can assume equal variances for mental health. Use of psychotropic drugs, Levine's wasn't significant, so we can assume equal variances for drug use. But for stressful life events, we did get a significant Levine's test, so we can't assume equal variances for stressful life events. So that might have some bearing on follow-up analysis we do. Um, and then if we look at our test of between subjects effects, what we find is if we look at age group, we get four F values, one for each. This is this is our individual univariate ANOVAs, one for each of our dependent variables, and we find that we've got an F value of 1.030 for physical health symptoms, P is equal to 0.379. 1.091 for mental health symptoms, P is equal to 0.352. Use of psychotropic drugs, we get an F value of 0.717, P is equal to 0.542. Uh, so those three are all non-significant and stress for life events, we get a value of 15.030, P is less than 0.001. Uh, so that is statistically significant, uh, even when we adjust the alpha down to 0.0125 by dividing the 0.05 significance by 4, because we've done four univariate tests here. So using that bond for any correction. The problem with this though, which I didn't cover in the previous uh, was this is this assumes this normal ANOVA test here, which might be safe, but it assumes that um, we can uh, we got a non-significant Levine's test, so we can assume equal variances. But we didn't for stressful life events, and that's the only one that seems to be of interest to us. Seems that this significant ManOVA result, all the variance in the difference between the groups, is all explained by stressful life events. So. Firstly, what can we do? We can run a more we can run a more robust ANOVA, such as Welsh's test. And we there's if we try to do that when we use the general linear model approach and click on so univariate, all I'm gonna do here is a univariate ANOVA test on stressful life events, our 1 dV. So we, we can't assume equal variances for that variable. Uh, so we need a more robust test. And if we look at the different options, if we look at post hocs, yes, for post hocs by age group, doesn't give you the option to select Welsh's test. Gives you the option for post hoc tests where you can't assume equal variances, but it doesn't offer uh, doesn't offer the opportunity to do an ANOVA and get a robust ANOVA. Okay, um, if we select estimated marginal means as age group, we, it doesn't allow us to do that. We can do some sort of post hoc Bonferroni adjustment, but that's not not the option we're looking for. If we click on options, I think all right, it might be here, but it isn't. We can get descriptives, homogeneity, but it doesn't allow us to do Welsh's test. And for some reason, if you use this uh, this route that we've just used, I'm going to reset it because we're going to do it differently. If you use this route we've just used where we went analyze general linear model or univariate or multivariate or any others, it doesn't allow you to select box, uh, Welsh's test to do a robust ANOVA. The only way to do it in SPSS appears to be through the very first way we did it, which was if you go analyze, compare means, and this very specific one way ANOVA option. Okay, so if we do that, click stressful life events, use age group as our factor, and then if we click on options, here it allows us to do Welsh's test. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do. From there, I'm going to do a Welsh test to see if, with a robust test, we still get a significant ANOVA result. And it gives us the same, the normal ANOVA, which is obviously the same as we the one we got here in this table. But 
gives us the Welsh's test as well. And although the statistics slightly, the F value slightly lower, it's 12.873, we can still see it's statistically significant. So with a robust test on stressful life events, which seems to be the thing behind our significant manover, they, or it seems to be the, the dependent variable that is accounting for the difference, significant difference between groups on our manover. We still get a significant, if we, if we look at univariate manovers we, and we do a robust test, we still find that uh, stressful life events is significant using Welsh's test. But the thing I wanted to do in this video was to show you um, when we have got this significant manover, we can rather than we check our Levine's tests and uh, still find we've got a an issue with stressful life events not being able to assume homogeneity of variance. But rather than using univariate tests, we can do Roy Bargeman's step down analysis. Okay, and the way we do that is just we it's basically running multiple tests. Um, an ANOVA and three, in this case, three ANCOVAs. So what we're going to do is go ANOVA, uh, sorry, analyze general linear model univariate in this case. And it gives us this pop-up box. And what we're going to do is use age group as our independent variable. Again, stressful life events as our dependent variable. Okay. Um, we can ask for descriptives and things like this, but we've already got them, so we don't need them. So if we just click OK, what we'll find is we get the same ANOVA result as we got before using Royce and Bargeman step down analysis. We've basically just done a univariate ANOVA using stressful life events as our DV, age group as our independent variable. The next step, though, is to um to put our next highest priority dv from the manover model in to an anova and use stressful life events as an as a covariate so what we're going to do is analyze general linear model univariate this time we're going to take stressful life events out of the dv box but include it as a covariate and the order we'll do these in our stressful life events, which we've just done, the ANOVA on, and then we'll do physical health, then mental health, and then psychotropic drugs last. And we'll pretend for some theoretical reason, that's why, that's the order they should go in. Okay, so now we're doing an ANCOVA analysis covariance with physical health symptoms as the DV, stressful life events as a covariate, and we're looking at differences between our age groups. So if we click OK, we get another output for uh, an ANCOVA. And what this table now shows us is um, it shows us stress here as a covariate. OK. And you get an F value of 39.568. P is less than 0 0.001. What this tells us is that in this particular model, uh, when we look at the difference between age groups on physical health symptoms, stress is a significant covariate of physical health symptoms. Okay, and then the ANOVA looking at physical health symptoms in relation to age group, we get an F value of 3.260, P is equal to 0.021. Remember, we're doing four tests here, so we need to adjust our alpha level. Um, down using Bonferroni. So we need to divide 0 0.05 by 4 and get a new significance level of 0 0.0125. And if we do that, what we find is this isn't statistically significant. Okay, so what this is telling us is that physical health symptoms, uh, differences uh, between age groups, there are no significant differences between age groups on physical health symptoms once we control for the variance accounted for uh, by stress. Okay, if we partial out the influence of stress, then there's no difference between age groups and physical health symptoms. Okay, so now 
We need to do the third step, which is another ANC algorithm. We're going to analyze general linear model of the univariate. This time, we're going to take physical health symptoms out of the dependent box, put it in as a covariate, and we're going to put mental health symptoms in as a dependent. Okay, so we're looking at differences in mental health symptoms between our age groups, and we're treating stress and physical health as covariates. So if we click OK, we get a similar table to one before with a bit more info in it. And what we're seeing here is that stress gets an F of 30.997, P is less than 0.001. Physical health has an F value of 104.737, P is less than 0.001. And age group, our IV, in relation to the DV mental health symptoms, we get an F value of 0.702, P equals 0.551. So not statistically significant. So what we're seeing is there isn't a significant difference between the age groups in terms of mental health symptoms. Once we partial out the significant covariates of stress and physical health. Okay, so it's telling us that they're significant covariate, these significance values for the two covariates is telling their significant covariates of mental health symptoms. Okay, but once we take control for the variance that they explain in the model, then mental health uh, isn't a significant predictor of differences between the age groups. Okay, last step now. We're going to go analyze general linear model univariate, and we're going to do another ANCOVA. This time we're going to put mental health symptoms in so we've got three covariates now and we'll include drug use as our dv click ok slightly bigger table again same sort of way it's interpreted we have seen that stress has an f value of 20.097 p is less than 0.001 so that's a significant covariate physical health has an f of 38.794 p is less than 0.001 so that is a significant covariate. Mental health has an F value of 8.306. P is equal to 0.004. So our criterion is 0.0125. So it is significant. So we've got three significant covariates. Uh, and then if we look at uh, the differences between age groups on psychotropic drug use, we get an F of 0.912. P is equal to 0.435. And it's not significant. So what we're finding here is that um, there isn't a significant difference between age groups in terms of their drug use. Once we've controlled for and partialed out the influence of these three significant covariants, stress, physical health and mental health. OK, so what this all tells us using this step down analysis is we're, we're kind of controlling for variance that's already been explained by previous DVs. Uh, and what it tells us essentially is that once, we, once we've done our ANOVA uh, using stressful life events, our main priority predictor in this case, we, we find that, that stressful life events is a significant predictor of differences between age groups or the age groups differ significantly in terms of their number of significant stressful life events. Uh, adding these others variables to the model uh, doesn't explain any more variance once we've controlled for once we've controlled for the previous uh, DVs. Okay, so this kind of confirms what we saw when we looked at univariate F's as a mean of a means of follow up tests. Um, the only the only DV uh, contributing to the significant man over is stressful life events. And there's a significant difference between these age groups in terms of stressful life events. So what we would now need to do is some sort of follow up post hoc test to look to see where the differences are. Is it between 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 40? etc so uh, which of these two which of these groups are significantly different from each other um, we know from our table of means that stress let's find them for stressful life events 
mean stress scores decrease as age increases. But we, what we want to know is are those differences significant? So we do a similar follow up to in the previous video. So we do we do analyze general linear model univariate. Uh, we can reset that, and we can use age group as our fixed factor, stress as our dependent variable, and we want to ask for a robust postdoc test such as Games Howell because we know we couldn't assume equal variance. So we want this equal variance is not assumed. Games Howell is probably the one to select because uh, we know from the Levine's test that we couldn't assume equal variances for that variable stressful life events. And it gives us this table of multiple comparisons. Okay, and we if we inspect this, what we find is a significant difference between 20 to 30 and 34 year olds and 20 to 30 and 40 to 50 and 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 to 60 year olds all significantly different. Um, so 20 to 30 year olds are significantly hard, more stressed than all the other age groups. 30 to 40 year olds are significantly more stressed than 50 to 60 year olds, but not 40 to 50 year olds. And 40 to 50 year olds are not significantly more stressed. There's no significant difference between them and 50 to 60 year olds. Okay, a lot to get through there. It's quite complex. And once you've run your man over, You've got assumptions that you've got to check. You can look at your Manover result. Then you need to do some follow-on tests. In this case, we use Roy, Roy Bargeman step-down analysis. If assumptions are not met, you probably need to do to just check other Anover tests, such as Welsh's test. And then once you've done your Roy Bargeman step-down, you probably then, if you've got if you've got set more than two groups and can't just look at the means need to do further post-hoc tests such as games howl that we did here okay that's enough of me talking i'm going to stop